want answers? I think I'm entitled. You want answers! I want the truth! You can't handle the truth! Do like Jesus said, search the scriptures and you'll know what is true. Amen. And welcome to another edition of the What Is Truth radio show, Sunday mornings right here on this local station. We thank you for joining us. We're with you for one solid hour, and this is Pastor Michael Caesar, and I uh, have my truth panel with me, uh, Brother Mark Sassy. Good morning. And Sister Teresa DiPietro. Good morning. And we're going to be with you for the next hour, and grab your Bibles. We're in the fifth book of the New Testament, the Acts of the Apostles. We're jumping into chapter 23, and just to remind you what had happened back in chapter 22, Paul was in Jerusalem, there was a big uproar, and Paul uh, tried to calm the people down with a beautiful testimony, and he told them about how he saw the light from heaven, and how he heard the voice of the Lord, and how the Lord had chosen him to go to the Gentiles and and be a prophet and a witness to them. And then the Jewish people got angry and there was a big uproar again. And the captain of the centurion band uh, grabbed him to get him away. And uh, when he learned that Paul was a Roman citizen, he determined what we'll do is we'll keep him safely. And on the next day, on the morrow, closing chapter 22 of Acts, verse 30, on the morrow, because he, the captain, wanted to know the certainty whereof who are these Jews accusing him he loosed him from his bands he commanded the chief priests and all the council appear and he brought Paul down and he set Paul before them and he figured to get the two sides together and we'll find out what's going on here Amen. good way to find out what's happening Amen. somebody says something well let's sit them both down and figure this thing out yeah he wanted to hear the whole story Good. The I like Captain. That. Yeah, he wanted to get this. A uh, regular Paul Harvey, yes. Well, he, okay. he was going to scourge him to get the information out of Paul, but then he found out he was a Roman and he didn't do he that. Stopped. Right. <clears throat> they stopped doing that. So in chapter 23, <laughs> Paul is before the Sanhedrin. Yes. And it reads like this The Bible says in Acts chapter 23, it says, And Paul, earnestly beholding the council, I'll said. Just hold you. Now, the Sanhedrin, that was a big religious group in Jerusalem that presided over the temple and the worship. Yes. Okay, made up of a, a whole bunch of people. There there was scribes, there was Pharisees, Pharisees there was Sadducees. Okay, Sadducees. the top people. Yep. Okay, good. Yes. And, uh, and the chief priests. Yep. Okay. So it says, And Paul, earnestly beholding the council, said, Men and brethren, I have lived in all good conscience before God until this day. That's a good testimony. It's a great Absolutely. testimony. To live... Not just a good conscience before my wife or before my friends, but before God. Yes. Knowing that God watches me, and so I'm trying to live according to the conscience he gave me. That's a great testimony. Well, Amen. and the priest didn't like it, Ananias. <laughs> he didn't like that because what he was doing in the priest's eyes was wrong. So no, you're not living in good conscience. Well, especially... You're doing everything wrong. They think that he's gone for, he's left the Jewish faith yeah. and now he's following this thing called the way which is the new Christians Amen. and so that's why the high priest doesn't like that statement mm-hmm. yeah yeah, yeah. He, and he's thinking he left the Jewish way but actually he's completing the Jewish way amen because the promise to the Jews was the Messiah would come and he's received that Messiah and exactly he's saying Jesus showed up here he is yeah. this is the one amen yeah and verse 2 and it says in the high priest Ananias commanded them that stood by him to smite him on the mouth. Mm -hmm. Then said Paul unto him, God shall smite thee, thou whited wall. For sittest thou to judge me after the law, and commandest me to be smitten contrary to the law? And they that stood by said, Revilest thou God's high priest? Well, then said Paul, I wist not, brethren, that he was the high priest. For it is written, Thou shalt not speak evil of the ruler of thy people. So right there at the end of verse 5, I have to go back for a second to Luke's gospel, chapter 3. Okay. In verse 2 of Luke 3, 2, it says, Annas and Caiaphas being the high priests. Yes. So Annas and Caiaphas in Luke 3, 2, they were both the high priests at that time. Yep. And so Paul, he's probably expecting Caiaphas. And Mm -hmm. here's somebody other than Caiaphas and but when he realizes that he is the high priest, he follows the law, he holds to the law, and he says, Thou shalt not speak evil, the ruler of thy people. Now there was a 
a man that lived in the first century, Flavius Josephus. Yes. And I have his works at home. He has like 21 volumes. And he was a Jewish man. He was born in, I think, around 40 AD and a very brilliant man. And the Romans appreciated his intellect and they hired him as an historian. And as an historian, he not only kept Roman history, he was allowed to go to the temple because at this time you saw the Romans around the temple. Yes. He was given permission to go in and to look at all the documents in the temple. And they kept careful records. You read in the Old Testament, they have the chronicles of the kings and the chronicles of the priests. And he went through there and it turns out he has most of the historical information about the Herod family, Herod the Great, Herod Antipas, and also about the procession of the high priests. Okay. And what had happened, he writes in there, during the time of the rule of Herod, the high priests had become very political. And it's true, Ananias was, he's a very old man here, he's got to be in his 80s. He was the high priest, and instead of having the proper a procedure followed for the next high priest, he hired his nephew, Caiaphas, hmm. and it was a political priesthood. And Caiaphas technically was the high priest, but Ananias still wanted to hang on to some of the power. And so okay. he went around. So technically he wasn't the high priest, but he's being treated like the high priest. It's political now. It's a, it's a nepotism is oh, going on at the temple. Thankfully they don't do that now in politics. <laughs> Maybe not, but they were doing it back then. <laughs> <laughs> well, as the story goes, in, in verse 6, the Bible says, but when Paul perceived, now he's, he's in front of the whole Sanhedrin, the yes. council, but when Paul perceived that the one part were Sadducees and the other Pharisees, he cried out in the council, men and brethren, I, I am a Pharisee, the son of a Pharisee. Of the hope and resurrection of the dead, I am called in question. Now let's go just a little bit further up to like verse 11. Sure, and then we'll, sure. Then Keep we'll rewind. Verse 7, and when he had so said, there arose a dissension between the Pharisees and the Sadducees, yeah. and the multitude was divided. For the Sadducees say that there is no resurrection, neither angel nor spirit. But the Pharisees confessed both. And there arose a great cry. And the scribes that were of the Pharisees' part, they arose and strove, saying, We find no evil in this man. But if a spirit or an angel has spoken to him, let us not fight against God. And when there arose a great dissension, the chief captain, fearing lest Paul should have been pulled in pieces of them, he commanded the soldiers to go down, to take him by force from among them, and to bring him into the castle. So that's what happened at that gathering of the council. So Paul splits the crowd, divides the crowd between the Sadducees and the Pharisees. And so if you think about it for a second, consider the fact that um, he, where did I have this? He uh, had no real good chance of, anyways, he had no real good chance of trying to win over that crowd. They already had prejudices against him. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. So whatever argument he would have given, they already had a predetermined They're already set idea. in their minds. Yes. Yeah. But what he did instead was he divided them between the Pharisees and the mm -hmm. Sadducees, sure. and then no longer were they looking to him or looking... They're at each other's They're throats. at each other's, yes. Absolutely. I mean, Paul, And then, if you remember, ahead. when he was a young man, he studied at the temple. Yeah. He, he'll confess in one of the books, it may be Galatians or Philippians, that as he was growing up, he was studying to be a Pharisee. Yes. Mm -hmm. So he spent time at the temple. Now, one of the things that Jesus said one day when he was in Jerusalem and the scribes and the Pharisees came to Jesus and they started arguing with Jesus about traditions, Jesus answered and said to them, why do ye, and it was the Pharisees, transgress the commandment of God by your tradition? In vain, you're teaching people to worship God, teaching them the commandments of men and the traditions of men. So one of the things Paul knew when he was uh, at the temple, he's learning the traditions of the Pharisees. He also knew the Sadducees had political <clears throat> inroads at the temple too. So it, it almost, it's like, it's like today's Congress. We have Democrats and Republicans. Yes. They have two different platforms. Okay. Th what God would like is unity. Yes. There shouldn't be two parties. There should only be one. At the temple, it should be God's party. Yes. In the Congress, it should be the constitutional party, 
Nothing else. I agree. But, but, no, it's okay, but I'm not worried about the United States. So get yeah. back to the temple. There should be one party teaching one thing. They had two different groups teaching two different things, and they both developed their own traditions. And Paul knew this. He said, when I was studying, we believed in the resurrection. It was promised in the Old Testament. Amen. We believe in angels. We believe in the spirit world. And I remember the Sadducees, their traditions, they don't believe in the resurrection, verse 8. They don't believe in angels. They don't believe in the spirit world. Right. Uh, and so I, I, if I just bring this up, they're going to fight among themselves. And as they're all fighting, the Romans who are making the decision is going to look at this and go, these people are so confused. They're willing to fight among themselves. Of course, they're going to pick on Paul. We've got to let Paul go. Yeah. I think that's what he was thinking. And, and that's what happened. And, and the council just kind of... Like it says, there was a great dissension, right? And, and they, they just argued amongst themselves. But the real question that comes up as you're reading this part of the Bible yes. is, what about the resurrection? Mm -hmm. I mean, is it in the Old Testament? Is it in the Bible? Is it something that we can bank on and count on and, and know for sure about? Is it? And what about the afterlife? I mean, people well, have been good. asking this question if for ages. If we go back, let's go into that. But before we go into that real quick is, you know, something I was listening to today. Religion by its very nature is divided. Yes. Okay, so yes. religion divides people. And then what you ha what happens, and it's, and I'm sorry, religious systems are of the devil, right? Sure. Well, because it's all by works. works it's all works, by works, every, everything. works. And the devil is a divider, a house divided, can't stand, right? Correct. That's right. what Jesus said, not a Lincoln, right. by the Jesus way. Jesus said that. In and the, um, so yep. he produces, the devil produces rebels, right? Yes. But they don't line up to serve him. They get a hold of this and then they go off and create their own thing. So then we have multiple divisions of what people call Christianity. Right. That too, yeah. You know, so no, it's, it's not just Christianity versus it. others. There's there's different Christians denominations. Versus Christians Christians they versus Christians. Right. right. I see it all the time. Right. Yeah. Yeah. But now we can go on to um carry on with that. And, well, and the just, resurrection. And before and we itself. do carry on, that's a good point you you, you brought <clears> up. But we really don't want to call it Christians versus Christians. No. It's, because true Christians are united in Christ and in the Word of God, yes, right. it's the counterfeit, I guess, quote unquote Christians. They call themselves Christians, like I did when I was a little boy. Yeah. I thought I was a Christian, but I wasn't. A Christian is born again, Amen, with Christ inside of his heart by faith, and he got that faith from the Bible, and so he's Bible based. Amen. True Christians don't fight; they're right. not supposed to fight. Right. Yes. And, but, but the denominations, denominations do fight. fight. Yes, even yeah. though they and call then, themselves so Christians. And so it brings yes. you down to which one's right. Yes. You know, and that's what we're going to talk about. Well, the Bible is right. Amen. Amen. And, and God long, is right. Yeah. Long, God yeah. is right, and as long as the you stick with his Christian. word, Absolutely. then you're going the right way. Yes. But there are a lot of people around the world, not just in America, that they think if they're going to a church, they're a Christian. Yeah, I know. Well, you I know, did. just because you're in a garage doesn't mean you're a car. You're a car, <laughs> right? exactly. So, I say that to people all the time. Yeah. So <laughs> really, great. in order to be a Christian, you have to have a new birth. You Amen. have to be born again. Right. But before we even get to what the Bible says about the resurrection yes. and life after death, before we even get to that, how about, I've had people ask me many times in conversations over the years, well, how do we know for sure? What kind of proof do we have that the Bible is actually God's word, that it's actually the authority on the afterlife? Mm -hmm. How do we know? And I tell them all the time, I'm like, well, number one, God wrote this book, this, this King James Bible, this is God's words, and he signed it. He didn't just write it, he actually signed it with prophecy. Absolutely. And so all through the Bible, you find prophecy and just for an example on, you know, because we could go on and on for an hour or more oh, about sure. prophecy. But in the day of Passover, when Jesus went to the cross of Calvary, there were over 30 prophecies fulfilled from the Old Testament in less in 24 in hours. In a 24 hour period. That's and correct. Just to remind people of some of those, just to think about this, the Bible says that he would be the, that the Messiah who would come would be of the seed of Abraham from the tribe of Judah. He would be heir to the throne of David. He would be born in Bethlehem as he was. He would be born of a virgin. He would be declared to be the son of God. He would be rejected by his own. He would come into Jerusalem as a king riding on a donkey. He would be sold for 30 pieces of silver. He would be accused by false witnesses. 
These are all fulfilled prophecies from the prophets sure. of the Old Testament. Sure. Right? I could go on. Sold for 30 pieces of silver. It's music to my ears. By, by someone who wasn't exactly a, a lover of God or a lover of the Old Testament, a traitor. Um, when he was up on the cross, they were gambling for his clothes. That was predicted a thousand years before it was done. Amen. And those men gambling were Roman soldiers. They never read the Old Testament. They They're the fulfilling Testament. prophecy. Yeah. 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 Without knowing anything Without about it. Without even knowing. Yeah. So just a little bit more. The, the prophecies about Jesus said that he would be silent to accusations. Yes. That he would be spat upon and smitten, hated without a cause. He would be the sacrificial lamb, crucified with criminals, pierced through hand, feet, and side, as Zechariah said. Yeah. That he would be given vinegar and gall. The soldiers would gamble for his coat, right? No bones broken, buried with the rich, resurrected from the dead, ascended to the right hand of God. That no bones broken is another amazing thing too. I know. Because when somebody went to, I think it was Pilate, and said, we want those bodies off the cross before the sun sets, Pilate sent the soldiers out and said, make sure those guys are dead. And the way they would do it is break, break the their legs. leg bones. Yeah. And that's and what they, they went, did with the rest. And they broke the other two. But when they came to Jesus, they didn't break his bones. And these are soldiers under orders Fulfilling a prophecy, not even realized. Amen. Dr. Peter Stoner at Caltech, with a number of, uh, he's head of the mathematics department, with a number of PhDs, they ran those prophecies through compound probability and found just those prophecies alone in the 24 hours. Less than the chance of them being fulfilled was less than one out of 10 to the 80, which is an insane number. That's yeah. a one followed by 80 zeros. So if you believe in math yeah. as a fact, you ought to believe in Jesus and the Bible yeah. as a fact. It, so, so there's you, one of the signatures, so the, the fingerprints of God, the, the prophecy. The, there you go. There's one <laughs> fingerprint of God, the prophecy, his signature, his book. Uh, the yeah. second thing I would say for people that are, you know, like, how do I know for concrete proof that I can trust <laughs> the Bible when it talks about the afterlife? Number two is change lives. Every born again Christian a testimony. has Somebody's a testimony. testimony has changed lives. They're born again. They've received Christ as their Savior. They've had their sins washed away. Their lives are changed. Amen. And even nations have been blessed. Think about England and America over the last, I don't know, three or 400 years. The blessings that they've had while they're following the Lord's ways and the cursings that they've had by turning if from If they him. didn't. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, and, and one of the great <clears throat> changes in a life that occurs, I'll give it to personally, um, when I was young and growing up and I was a, a Catholic, I thought I was a Christian, but I was a Catholic and a Catholic is not a Christian if you believe what you're taught in the church. And I did, you know, I got to do the sacraments. I got to do this, Amen. all of works. Okay. Yeah. Uh, and I'm growing up and I'm Catholic and I knew at one point, you know, I'm going to die someday. Now you don't think about it too much, but in my twenties, I said, you know, there's a day coming and I'd like to have as long a life as possible. So I'm, I'm going to eat healthy. I'm going to live healthy because I'm afraid of death. And my biggest fear was cancer or heart disease. So I mm -hmm. took real good care of myself. And then curiously, when someone brought me to the Bible, the book of Hebrews tells about a change that happened in me. We see Jesus who was made for the suffering of death. It became him that he would suffer the same way we did. He became a partaker of flesh and blood that he would, through death, destroy the power of death and deliver them who, through the fear of death, were all their lifetime subject to bondage. And I remember when I got born again in 93, I wasn't afraid of cancer anymore Amen. or anymore. a heart attack. Exactly. Matter of fact, I, I wish I would have one. Yeah. <laughs> I could get to go no. home. Or you I stuck wish... with us. Sorry. <laughs> I know. But <laughs> it, I mean, that's an amazing change. And that fear yeah. is taken. That only comes through the new birth. Well, and I've that, mentioned this before. Yeah. I know when I got saved, I was walking through my home and I, all of a sudden out of my mouth came, oh, there's heaven. I'm going to heaven. <laughs> Amen. Like Amen. I knew for sure. Yes. I really never thought about a, that stuff An prior. assurance and a but confidence. But I had a blessed assurance. Amen. that I knew where I was yeah. going. Amen. Amen. So a couple other things, because people like to be able to know for sure, yeah. right? Yes. And so a couple other things, reasons why to trust the Bible and why to trust what it says about the resurrection. The Bible covers or mentions all matters of life. Yes. There's so many different things about that come up in everyday life and relationships and different things. 
the Bible talks about all those different things if you just spend the time reading it. Another thing is that there's no other book, and I've read a lot of books, there's no other book written in three dimensions. This mm, book yeah. is written historically, spiritually, and doctrinally, kind of like past, present, and future. Yep. Amen. Absolutely. God writes in 3D yes, yes. in a King James Bible. Yeah. He and does that a lot in threes, doesn't he? <laughs> yes. <laughs> and you're not going to find that in <clears throat> any other religious book. You're not going to find it in any historical book. I don't find it in my textbooks, my medical books either. Yeah. No. They're, they're pretty you, linear. You read a lot of books, yeah. didn't it, you? It's supernatural. Yeah. yeah. How about the fact that it's 100% true, never false, no errors, not even one? I mean, people have been scouring through this Bible for years trying and years to trying to find error. an error. Yeah. There's not one. Yeah, archaeologists like Sir William Albright, uh, after studying... Now, now, most of the archaeology you'll find that's biblically related is in the Middle East. Yes. It doesn't talk a lot about North America or South America, but it talks about the area where the men that wrote this book lived. Amen. And archaeologists have said when they are working in the Middle East, they've never found a, an artifact that controverted the Bible. It agreed with the Bible. Amen. And sometimes maybe they haven't found one yet, but uh, one of the archaeologists, uh, Randall Price, was saying absence of evidence is not evidence of absence. It just means we haven't found it yet. But everyone they found has agreed with the Bible. There's an entire magazine called Biblical Archaeology. Yeah. And, and That's pretty good I, I used, proof. Yeah, it is. Interesting. The other thing I thought of, and I don't know if you guys think about this, but I think about this, it comes up all the time. This book has absolutely perfect editing. You know, as I read through books, I feel like sometimes I could have been in, uh, a proofreader. Yes. Because every book I read, I always find errors. And sometimes yeah. I'll tell my wife, Cheryl, I'll be like, look at this. There's like three, four errors right in this one paragraph. <laughs> mm -hmm. I mean, how did they even publish this book? Well, right? when when I reproduce a verse for somebody and send it in like a text, yeah. I make sure there's a semicolon or a colon or a comma. I put it in there. Yeah. I put it exactly the way it's written in here. Because there's a reason for it all. It's pure. There's a it's reason. Perfect. Every word of God is pure. Yes. Right? Amen. Proverbs Amen. 35. And, and Amen. so since we can trust five. the scriptures, it's the sure script, it's the sure writing of God. Since we can trust that, let's take a look in Luke chapter 20, what it says about the resurrection. Sure. Because, and while you're turning there, yeah. I just, and this, this is it. Now, you testified, Teresa, you testified, Mark, I testified yeah. of the change in our life. And someone out there is going, well, I don't see it. I don't feel it. I'm not sure. God invites you. He says, taste and see, see. that the Lord is good. Amen. You've got you to come to it. I, I, I finally had to, at 39 years old, go to a Bible study and look into the book. Until you enter in yourself, it's like going into water. You won't know what the temperature is until you stick your toes in. you got to get in. <laughs> it's like a, then, it's like a different food. you got to taste. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. then, you know, Second Peter 1.21, you're talking about how do you know, but... I do oftentimes show people this verse, for the prophecy came not in old time by the will of man, but holy men of God spake as they were moved by the Holy Ghost. You mean men didn't write this book? <laughs> God Boy, wrote they, this book. They love to say that men wrote it, but no, they were inspired. It's okay. inspired. The, right. You Amen. were talking about 3D before, <clears throat> yeah. Yeah. and you're correct. It is primarily 3D. The writing was a, a dual work. It's like if I asked you the question, was Jesus God or was he man? Hmm. The answer is both. both. Yes. Okay. Um, are we physical or are we spiritual? Yes. The answer is both. both. Yes. Okay. Is the Bible written by God or by men? It's both. He used men, Amen. inspired men. Yes. Amen. And, and that verse explains it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Pretty simple. I know. Yeah. So in Luke chapter 20, verse 27, the Bible says, Then came to him, that would be Jesus, certain of the Sadducees, which deny that there is any resurrection. And they asked him a question, right? And in that question, if we look a little further in the chapter, verse 37 and 38, the Bible says, says, Now that the dead are raised, even Moses showed at the bush, he's referring to Exodus chapter 3, the burning bush, even Moses showed at the bush when he calleth the Lord the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. Now, Abraham lived like 400 years before that. Yes, before but, Moses, yeah. But God's the God of Abraham. That means Abraham's not dead. Not I was the God, I am exactly. the God right now at this yes. moment. I'm still his God. Not only that, but uh, Moses talked about that, you know, like Abraham's still alive. Yes. And in Luke chapter 16, Jesus talks about Father Abraham, that he's still he's alive. Still, and he was. And he is. <laughs> and he still is, yes. Yeah. So there is a resurrection. You know, I'm wondering, you started with verse 27. 
Uh, Jesus is in the temple teaching, and then came certain of the Sadducees, not the Pharisees, the Sadducees, which deny that there is any resurrection. And I'm imagining the reason they said it is that that word's not found in our Bible. In the Old Testament. You can't find the word resurrection from the books of Moses, Genesis, all the way through to Malachi. Not that word. That's correct. But the believers that were trusting in the Messiah, they believed in it. Yes, because the... It's drawn out like a portrait, and God didn't give a word to it just yet. He was testing the readers. Do you see what I'm promising you here, that you're going to be raised up one day? Amen. But he didn't put the word resurrection in. Now, that's before the first coming. Jesus is here at the first coming. We don't believe there's a resurrection. It's not in the Old Testament. We're getting ready for the second coming. <laughs> yes. And you know what we're looking forward? We're looking forward to a rapture. Amen. And there are some Sadducees sad to say today, who say there's no rapture because it's not in the New Testament. And yet it's drawn out for us in the books of Corinthians and Thessalonians and and Revelation. And we've put a word to the concept that hasn't been given yet by God. And they did the same thing. And Jesus confirmed that word. And the first thing he'll come back when he, probably when he calls is say, this is the rapture, kids. <laughs> but well, anyways. I, I would say this. I would say, you know, if you consider that the Jews had the scrolls of the Old Testament yes. prophets. In those scrolls, you read that stuff. It's clear that there is a rising again. Absolutely. You'll find it in Job. You'll find it in Chapter the Psalms. Chapter 19 in Isaiah in and, Isaiah, yes, yes. I guess we should look at some of we those. We can look at some, but we're just about out of time <laughs> here getting, at the first getting... half of the show. You listen to the What Is Truth radio show. We're with you every Sunday morning. We'd like to spend this early hour in the morning with you. Rise and shine. Get ready. Get ready for church. Uh, and um, we enjoy you uh, being with us. You're always welcome to not only listen to us uh, live, as you are now, but listen to the old programs. We are sponsored by the Grace and Truth Church. It's a little assembly up in Amherst, New York, and they have a uh, website. You got to go to Google. You have to type in Grace and Truth Church. It's one long word, Grace, A-N-D, Truth, and you got to put church there, then dot O-R-G. When you hit that, you'll come to the homepage, and up will come something called Sermons. Click on that, and then you'll have a couple of options with the Sermons. Click on YouTube, and when you go to YouTube, you will see what is truth. And you can listen to the old programs right there. And um, we hope you get a blessing out of them. We like having you with us. And we're going to take a short break for station identification. We'll be right back with the second half after this. And what we're going to look at is the resurrection. Grab your Bible and join us. Be right back in a moment. Want answers? I think I'm entitled. You want answers. I want the truth. You can't handle the truth. Do like Jesus said, search the scriptures, and you'll know what is true. Amen. And welcome back to the second half of the show. We have been going through Acts chapter 23, and we saw that Paul, when he was being examined by a religious council, noticed that there were divisions among the religious leaders in Jerusalem, just as there are divisions among the religious leaders in quote-unquote Christianity today. And he's going to get them to fight one with another. And they're basically arguing over traditions. Now, some of them do have some concepts that are true, but they don't fully appreciate them. We're going to look at the truth in there. And the the truth that he homed in on right away was the resurrection. Yes. Yeah. Well, Paul was... Paul's preaching about the resurrection throughout the book of Acts. Sure. And we're studying the book of Acts. And like you said, that word's not found in the Old Testament. But in John chapter 11, when Lazarus died, it says in John chapter 11, verse 23, Jesus is speaking to uh, Mary. And uh, he says, thy brother shall rise again. Actually, it's Martha. I'm sorry. He says, thy brother shall rise again. Verse 24 of John 11. Martha saith unto him, I know that he shall rise again in the resurrection at the last day. Now, this is a Jewish woman speaking about the resurrection, even though that word's not found in the Old Testament. Yeah. But she knew the concept. Absolutely. Yeah. And then Jesus, verse 25, saith unto her, I am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. And whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die. Believest thou this? Now, that takes the Messiah in order to do that. Absolutely. Yeah. It, he's saying very clearly, simple terms, if you believe in me, you will live. 
He's talking about everlasting life yeah. after this life. Yeah, I mean, again, you're in John chapter 11. And listener, if, if you've never looked into the Bible, one of the great books to begin with is the Gospel of John. Amen. Because it gives a beautiful portrait of God's Son, the Lord Jesus Christ, showing you that he is the resurrection and the life. He is the Lamb of God that takes away the sin of the world. But in this 11th chapter... One of his dear friends, Lazarus, died. Lazarus had two sisters, Mary and Martha. They were faithful Jews. And when they heard Jesus preach, they began to recognize this is the Messiah. And they became followers of the Messiah. And when Lazarus died, Jesus is going back to show the power and the glory of God, to show that he has the power to raise a dead person, which he'll do in the chapter. But when he comes to her, in verse 23, he says, thy brother shall, and he uses the words from the Old Testament, rise again. Amen. Those are the words you find in the Old Testament. She quickly says, well, I know he'll rise again in the resurrection, in the resurrection. I mean, it would be like Jesus saying, you know, you'll be caught up one day. Oh, I know I'll be caught up in the rapture. Yeah. I'm, I'm excited to use that new word. Yeah. Now, when she uses the word, Jesus does not correct her and say, where'd you come up with that word? Don't use that. Yeah. He says, right. no, there is a resurrection, I but I am the resurrection Amen. and the life. And Amen. by the way, he's the rapture also, because he's the one catching us. But go Amen. ahead, brother. So, yeah. so you know, I believe this is important for everyone at any time that you live in. But as you get older and later in life, it's especially important because you know that the time is coming. And, and if you consider look in the book of Hebrews, chapter 9, verse 27. Seven. It is appointed talks, unto men once to die. And, and, and then after the judgment. This, the judgment. The judgment, right. yes. And then, of course, uh, Ecclesiastes 9, 5 and 6. For the living know that they shall die, but the dead know not anything. Yeah. Neither have they any more a reward, for the memory of them is forgotten. Also their love and their hatred and their envy is now perished. Neither have they any more a portion forever in anything that is done under the sun. So there's no re reincarnation. There's no reincarnation. No. Hebrews 9.27, Ecclesiastes. Yeah. There's no reincarnation. But there is Sorry a resurrection. Amen. There's a resurrection, no Amen. reincarnation. And, and, and the thing is, with the concept of reincarnation, the way it's taught is, you know, I die and my soul will be recycled, to so something to speak, else. like plastic or, or, you know, or paper. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> It'll be recycled. Like the movies. But, but no God <laughs> is involved. But in the resurrection, we need God, Amen. and we need the Son of God. And, and, and He gets the glory, and Amen. He gets the praise. That's it. That's it. And it's all His work, that work at Calvary. On the cross. Yes. Absolutely. And so in that, I'd like to go to the Psalms for a little bit, sure. because yeah, the Bible is clear that there is a resurrection. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. And even if it doesn't use that exact word, in Psalm 24, there's a question in verse 3. It says, Who shall ascend into the hill of the Lord? Ascend is a word very similar to rise. That's correct. Right? To go up. Who shall rise? Who shall ascend into the hill of the Lord? Who shall stand in his holy place? Now yes. think about this. Here we are living on earth. You're going to die someday. Yeah. Who's going to make it up there? Who's going to make it to heaven? Verse 4, it says, He that hath clean hands and a pure heart, who hath not lifted up his soul unto vanity, nor sworn deceitfully. Now, clean hands, that's no works. That's not by your works. Right. Okay. Verse 5, he shall receive the blessing from the Lord. You have and, to receive it. Yeah, and... And righteousness from the God of his salvation. God's going to save him and give him righteousness. Bingo. It's a gift. This is the generation of them that seek him, that seek thy face. Yes. O Jacob, Selah. So that's Psalm 24. Uh, if we look at Psalm 30... As we flip through a little bit, Psalm 30, verse 2, if I just read just a couple here, it says in Psalm 30, verse 2, O Lord my God, I cried unto thee, thou hast healed me. O Lord, thou hast brought up my soul from the grave, that's a resurrection, thou hast kept me alive, that I should not go down to the pit. Now that brought my soul up, not my body just yet, right now when I first died, you brought my soul up. Amen. And you've kept it alive that my soul won't go down to the pit. And they knew the pit at that it's time hell. as being hell. Yeah. Yes. He says, Sing unto the Lord, O ye saints of his. Give thanks at the remembrance of his holiness, for his anger endureth but a moment. In his favor is life. Weeping may endure for a night, 
but joy cometh in the morning. So, so that's interesting. So you're reading a Psalm of David written a thousand years BC, a thousand years before David wrote that was Abraham. And I'm yes. the God of Abraham. So this applying to Abraham, when Abraham's body died, his soul was brought up and he was able to sing unto the Lord. That's why Jesus could say, my father's the God of Abraham. Right now he's probably up there singing a chorus or a special in heaven. Amen. <laughs> because he has received the blessing of life. the Lord. The blessing yes. of life. Yeah. yeah. If you flip to Psalm 32, I mean, we're right here of verses 1 and 2, Psalm 32. It says, the Bible says, Blessed is he whose transgression is forgiven, Amen. whose sin is covered. Amen. Yeah. Blessed is the man unto whom the Lord imputeth not iniquity and whose spirit there is no guile. Now think about that. We're all sinners before the Lord. We've all sinned in our lifetime, but you can receive a blessing to have your sins washed away. You're going to Romans 4, right? Yeah. Verse 8. Go ahead. <laughs> Go ahead. Blessed is the man to whom the Lord will not impute sin. This is Paul when he's teaching the doctrine of yeah. salvation in Amen. the New Testament. And that's a great blessing. Blessed is the man or woman or child to whom the Lord imputeth not iniquity or sin. When I was a Catholic, I couldn't say that. I knew that if I sinned when I left the confessional on Saturday, which I did by Saturday night, uh, <laughs> that those Saturday sins were imputed night. to me until I went in the phone booth with the guy next week. It was right. still on me, supposedly. But when you have the blessing of the new birth, the Lord does not impute sin to you. Amen. Translation, uh, right now I have the gift of eternal life. I have a cleansed soul. My soul can no longer have sin imputed to it. It has been born again. It is the Lord's. It is what they say, washed by the blood of the lamb, which cleanseth all sin forever and ever. My soul is clean. Well, in what, a, what a blessing. Now, who Amen. has that? Only a born again child of God. That's Amen. right. No religious person can say that. The Bible says that the blood of Jesus Christ cleanses us from all sin. That's right. And one of the greatest, uh, cries out about sin is Psalm 51. Yeah. And in Psalm 51, the first few mm -hmm. verses, uh, this is David crying out, and he says, Have mercy upon me, O God, according to thy loving kindness, according unto the multitude of thy tender mercies, blot out my transgressions. Mm -hmm. He says, Wash me thoroughly from mine iniquity and cleanse me from my sin, for I acknowledge my transgressions and my sin is ever before me. Yes. Yeah. He says, against thee, thee only have I sinned. But further in the same chapter, verse 10, he says, create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Yes. And he verse, verse 17, he says, the sacrifices of God are a broken spirit, a broken and a contrite heart, O God, thou wilt not despise. Yeah. So God wants you to come clean to him, to sure. confess your sin and, and, and recognize that you have a need to have your sins washed away, you have a need for a Savior. You need to receive Jesus. Amen. Yeah. And, it, and it's not works because you will be found wanting. Where is that? Daniel, they were hung in Ch the balances. Chapter 5. 5 verse. Um, and the, toward the end of the chapter, many, many tekel of farsen. Yep. Thou art weighed in the balances and art found wanting. Yeah. You will never do enough good works to attain heaven. And the curious thing is religion always points taught you to us work. That, that we'll get weighed one day and the good works will outweigh the bad ones. But yeah. God already said, when you're put in my balances, you're always found wanting. Amen. Yeah. And your first birth, it's never enough. You must be born again. And then you have the promise, not only of all your sins being forgiven, but the promise of the resurrection. Job himself in the last, in the Old Testament, he spoke of the resurrection. Yes. He said, um, verse 25 of the 19th chapter of Job, 1925, I know that my Redeemer liveth. Job was a worshiper of God. He knew that God was his Redeemer and that God was alive. By the way, the old English word liveth, that, that ETH, Continuing. that's an ongoing, ongoing. that's an eternal. Amen. He lives forever. Amen. And that he, my Redeemer, shall stand at the latter day upon the earth. There's a day coming where the Redeemer is going to stand on the earth, not just in the first coming, but in the second coming. Amen. Uh, and though after my skin, worms will destroy this body, I'm going to be a corpse somewhere, you know, I know that. Yet in my flesh, when he stands, I'm going to see God. 
I'll see him for myself. Mine eye shall behold him. I'm going to be resurrected. That's what he's speaking of right there, the resurrection Amen. of a believer. And then uh, in, uh, go ahead. I'm sorry, in Daniel 12, um, 12, 2, um, <clears throat> and many of them that sleep in the dust of the earth shall awake, some to everlasting life and some to shame and everlasting contempt. And they that be wise shall shine as the brightness of the firmament, and they that turn many to righteousness as the stars forever and ever. Is your that, that, that's life? very interesting that she opened up there because she opened up a concept that Jesus taught in John chapter 5, which is yes. a little scary. But since we're, this is what is truth, yes. may as well give <laughs> the truth to truth. people. Go to John chapter 5. Because you you just read in Daniel 2, some will 12, awake yeah. to everlasting life, oh, in, yes. but yes. others will wake to shame, shame and, contempt. and contempt. And in John chapter 5, Jesus was trying to show the people that, that he is the Savior. Uh, verse 25, verily, verily, I say unto you, John 5 25 the hour is coming and now is when the dead shall hear the voice of the son of God and they that hear shall live for as the father hath life in himself so hath he given to the son to have life in his self and so God the son has the power to give life verse 28 marvel not for the hour is coming in which all A-L-L, that are in the graves, shall hear his voice. They're going to be resurrected. And they shall come forth. They that have done good, and he's going to explain in 1 Timothy chapter 2 what good is, that's to believe the gospel, unto the resurrection of life. They're going to be raised to live forever. And they that have done evil and have rejected the gospel unto the resurrection of life. Of damnation. That's Amen. only two ways. There's, there's only two. There's, everyone's going to get raised again. And that's that, it. That, yeah. Heaven or hell. Yeah. yeah. And, and right in the yeah. same chapter, verse twenty-one, the Bible says, "For as the Father raiseth up the dead, there's resurrection, right, and quickeneth them. That means to be made alive. Yep. Even so, the Son quickeneth whom He will. Verse twenty-two. For the Father judgeth no man, but hath committed all judgment unto the Son. So when you get judged. You're standing before Jesus. Yes. Yeah, he's the one doing the judging. Yes. And I noticed, uh, I'm going to jump back for a second, back in the Psalms, verse, Psalm 35, verse 24, I think is a very interesting verse. This is Old Testament, and it says, Judge me, O Lord my God, according to thy righteousness. Absolutely. So <laughs> when you're standing before Jesus, and he is the judge, He's going to judge according to thy righteousness. You're, you're, compare, you're being compared to Jesus, yes. who lived holy, harmless, undefiled, separate from sinners. Sinless life. Sinless life. Yes. yes. He, he's the, he's the God-man, yes. right? And so you, you can't expect to die and be weighed in the balance. You, you're going to be compared to Jesus. And the only way to be washed clean is to be born again. Yes. Amen. Paul, Paul had preached a few chapters back in Acts, that very thing when he was at Morris Hill. He said, um, you know, God put up with you making idols for a long time, but now, verse 30, God commands all men everywhere to repent. Amen. Turn back to him. Because God hath appointed a day in which he will judge the world in righteousness by that man whom he hath ordained, that's Jesus, whereof he hath given assurance to all men and that he, God, hath raised him from the dead. And so you're either going to believe in the resurrection of Jesus Christ and trust in his perfect work at Calvary's cross, or you're going to try and do the work yourself, and God's going to compare you to that man. And none of us can there's no compare comparison. To him. No, no. <laughs> exactly. And, and there's no escaping mm -hmm. the fact that you know everybody's been to a wake, everybody's been to a funeral. There's mm -hmm. no escaping. They say you can't escape death and taxes. Well, de taxes could change, but death is for sure. And Job, I thought, put it so clear in Job chapter 14. I'll just paraphrase here. He says in Job 14:10, he asks a question, but man dieth and wasteth away. Where is he? Hmm. That's what Job asks. And then in 14.14 14 of Job, he says, if a man die, shall he live again? The answer is yes, mm -hmm. through Jesus. Yeah. I mean, if you're in Christ, if you're trusting in the Messiah, Old Testament or New Testament, yeah. 
to trust in the Messiah, uh, I, I think it's pretty clear in John chapter 3. At the end of the chapter, it says, He, John 3, 36, He that believeth on the Son hath everlasting life. And he that believeth not the Son shall not see life, but the wrath of God abideth on him. Yeah. It's one hand or the other. Yeah. It's heaven or hell. And, and, and the same author later on wrote a little book in the back of the Bible called the First Epistle of John. And in First John chapter 5, he that hath the Son hath life. That's eternal life from the prior verse. And he that hath not the Son of God hath, hath not, life. not life. So... <laughs> You may have physical life, but the only eternal life you can have is by having the Son of God in your heart. And you get that when you believe the gospel. And the resurrection is a part of that gospel. That's Amen. what Paul preached everywhere. And all. the verse right after that, we try to show people all the time that you can know for sure. Yeah. Because when you ask somebody, they're, they're, most of them say, well, I hope so. I hope so. And, right. yeah. Um, well, yeah, I, I'm definitely going there. And then you ask why. Well, I took good care of my husband before he yeah, died. Yeah, and then yeah. we have to show these, I mean, come I on, rescued 70, a lot of dogs 80 and year olds. Yeah, for the yeah, SBCA, I rescued a yeah. lot. Exactly. But, <laughs> I recycle. And then we have to take them to, <laughs> I recycle. Exactly. <laughs> and then you have to take them to Ephesians 2 8 and 9. And then you have to, like, but, but I show them. I'm like, but you can know for sure. Amen. I don't think anyone can know. But it says these things, this is in First John 5, 13. These things have I written unto you that believe on the name of the Son of God, that ye may know that you have eternal That's life. Right. And Amen. that ye may believe on the name of the Son of God. And I love the next just few words in 14. And this is the confidence that we have Amen. in him. You were speaking before about <clears throat> the Bible. Yeah. And talking about certain reasons why, you know, people can trust it Absolutely. and believe it. Yeah. And one of the other reasons is the certainty of these words. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it, it's confident and assured of everything it writes. It's written so that you may know, not that you guess or you wonder, you hope, or I'll find out on the other side. You know, here and now, yeah. before you leave this body, what God plans to do. He's written it out for you. He's faithful and true. Yeah. He is. And and he sets it out like you say. He doesn't make he's not the author of confusion. Oh, he makes it plain and clear. The gospel is simple. It's the simplicity yeah. of Christ. The gospel message is that Christ died for our sins. Yes. That Moses wrote in one of the first books, a great book, Deuteronomy. Love that book. And he wrote in uh, Deuteronomy chapter 29, verse 29. It's true, the secret things do belong to the Lord our God, but those things which he's revealed belong unto us and to our children forever that we may do and, and know all the words of this law. God wants us to know these things, Amen. and he's, he's written them down. This is a revelation from and, God. And I have to testify in my lifetime, yeah. growing up Catholic and then attending a Lutheran church later as an adult, I never heard the verse that Teresa had just mentioned, 1 John 5, 13, that <laughs> these things are written that you may know. <laughs> you, you know why you never heard it? It's an unlucky number, 13. Everybody <laughs> knows you don't read verses like that. <laughs> you just bypass them. <laughs> well, you would, you would think that you would hear something like that at a funeral. Yeah, absolutely. You know, I read them all the time at our funerals here. Yeah. Our yeah. funerals are like celebration services here. I love here. That funerals at a born-again yeah. Christian's funeral service. Sure. Yeah. I love them. There's so much truth. And their celebration, we know where they are. We yes. know for sure where They've they are. They graduated. They knew. They graduated. <laughs> yeah, they're to the yeah. next but level. boy, oh yeah. boy, does it grieve me to go back to the funerals. Oh, gosh. A Catholic. Oh, yeah. I can't even oh, stay no. in there Weeping and, and listen yep. to those oh, yeah. people it's depressing. talking. Yeah. Well, they're not yeah. preaching truth, first Well, they're of all. saying John was a good man and he led that, a good okay. life. And... For someone who doesn't believe, I'd rather hear about their life. I'd yeah. rather not hear, well, he's in a better place. That's not it, true. Hell is not a better place. Hell, hell is not a better place. <laughs> right. And rest in peace. What, what do you mean rest in peace? Okay, only if you're in Christ. Amen. That's actually where they did get it right. There you is can no rest in peace. peace to the wicked, the there Bible no says. Peace. Right. Yeah. If you do not receive grace of God that brings salvation, there is no peace. Every time Paul writes it, it's grace first, peace follows. No grace, no peace. It's well, like Justin's shirt that he wears. No Jesus, no peace, no Jesus, no peace. But it's spelled differently. Yes. No N O Jesus N O peace, but K N O W Jesus no 
peace. K N O W no, peace. No peace. Name, name, and, and you know we're in Acts, we're in Acts chapter twenty three. But <laughs> yeah. if, if I peek ahead to the next chapter yeah. and I peek in Acts chapter twenty four, Paul summarizes what we're talking about here a little bit in Before two verses. Felix. Mm-hmm. Yep, he summarizes in verses fourteen and fifteen. Mm-hmm. He says, "But this I confess unto thee." That after the way, he's speaking about the Christian way, which they call heresy, so worship I, the God of my fathers, believing all things which are written in the law and in the prophets. He believes this book. Yes. Right? Amen. And oh. I have hope toward God, which they themselves also allow, that there shall be a resurrection of the dead, both of the just and the unjust. Right. And like Pastor was saying before, the Bible is clear. The only way to be just is to be as just as Christ to be as pure as Christ, sure. to be, have all your sins washed away. Sure. That's the only way to be just. And, and what happens too is when we're witnessing to people now, um, and you know, if you go to the end of 24 or 25, Felix trembled and answered. And this is what happens very often. Go thy way for this time. When I have a convenient season, I will call for thee. Mm. That is not what you do with the gospel. You need to receive it, listener. Amen. You can't wait for another day. Today is the day of salvation. You don't know what's going to happen to you in the next hour, in the next day, in the next... Tw- a lot can change in a day. People That's a have good witnessed point. that over and over again. That's a good a point. Lot can and change. you mentioned just, and in order to be just, you need to be justified. Amen. Amen. And in the next book, Paul writes that um, we can be justified by freely, freely by God's grace through the redemption that is in Jesus Christ. God sent Jesus Christ forth to be the payment in his blood for our sin, and we receive it by faith. In chapter 5, we are justified by faith. You say, what is faith? Well, Paul says later on in Romans 10, faith comes by hearing the word of God. Amen. There are There's religious faith, there's hope so faith, there's maybe even uh, a blind faith, but then there is the written faith of these words. And this is what God wants us to come to. Amen. And you always say all the time that Romans chapter like one through five. One through eight. Right? One through eight, especially, but mm-hmm. even just the first few yeah, even chapters. Even the first five will do it. I mean, those first five chapters, they will explain to you <laughs> how to make the right choice, how right. to uh, call Amen. upon the Lord Amen. and trust in his righteousness, not, not your own. Or yes. men's righteousness. People trust in men. Every man shall declare his own righteousness, the Bible says. <laughs> I'm a good man. We're, yeah, well, But a faithful man yeah. who can find is the Amen. next part of that verse in Proverbs. <laughs> I'm okay, I'm I just, okay. I heard that verse today. That's funny. <laughs> Amen. Amen. So, I mean, there's, there's so much in the Bible, and we hit on so many different things we about did. the resurrection and the fact that there is an afterlife, and there's only two destinations. So uh, I heard somebody talk about it this way one time. They said that... Uh, when you're traveling in a car or a truck, okay, that you use a map if you're on a, if you're on a trip, a road trip, or maybe you use a GPS on your phone or something, right? But it's either a map or a GPS on your phone, and you want to arrive at your destination. So you're on this trip and you're traveling. Well, the Bible also gives you a map to follow in order to receive eternal life mm-hmm. yeah. and not to arrive in hell. You don't want to arrive at the wrong destination. Yeah. And so that roadmap through the Bible, you find that mostly in Romans, in the book of Romans. So you can read it yourself, listener. But the first step, number one step, is to realize that you're a sinner. Amen. And in Romans 3.23, the Bible is clear that all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. Every one of us. Every one of us. And the second step on that roadmap, second step is that sin has a cost. Yes. In Romans 6.23, the wages of sin is death, death. but... The gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And then the third step, or let's say landmark along this road, is to know that you can't save yourself, which we discussed. But Romans 3.20 says that by the, leads, by the deeds of the law, no flesh shall be justified in his sight. Can't do it yourself. Yeah. And then the next step, step four, put your faith in Christ to save you. Ask him and believe the gospel. The gospel message sure. is that Christ died for our sins. There's the gospel. He was buried and he rose again yes. on the third day. That's it. That's the gospel. For our sins. That's it. Yeah. It's not years and years of instruction in classes. It's quick. It's quick. You yes. can receive it quickly. And that's the beauty. That God wants to save us. 
You were born in a moment of time. You can be born again in a moment of time. Amen. God Amen. wants to give you that gift. Absolutely. That's right. Amen. So that moment of time, I always tell people in 2 Corinthians chapter 6, yeah. it mentions that it's uh, on this day. Yeah. Behold, today is the now day. Now is the day of salvation. Now yeah. is the accepted time. You know, while Absolutely. you're looking at that, something yeah. that yeah. happened today, it's kind of cool. Yeah. In my voicemail, I say who I am. You know, I'm sorry I can't come to the phone, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> But at the end of it, it says, and just remember, in order to enter the kingdom of heaven, you must be born again. Amen. Yeah. And so today, I I don't answer my phone oftentimes because I like it to go to the voicemail first. <laughs> and so, especially like even my, my hair appointment, I know it's them, but I let it go to voicemail because I want whoever's calling me to hear my message and sure. I'll see you tomorrow. Sure. I don't need to talk to you. Yeah. Well, today, the girl that left me my message yesterday had many questions for me, and I got to Wonderful. give her the gospel, Amen. and Praise I gave her my little passport track, Amen. you know, the passport to heaven. Amen. Amen. And it's just a, so simple. And I tried to tell her, it's so simple. You know, I got her background, I got her husband's background, yeah. but it was within like a two, three minute conversation. Sure. And then I let it go and just pray to the Lord. Amen. And, and, and you can leave on your voice. Well, I'm sorry. I can't take this call, but God can always take your call. Yeah. Yeah. If you call in the name of the Lord, you can be saved. You know, we're just about out of time on, on today's show. I've been going through the book of the Acts of the Apostles and we saw there's, there's a division in religion. There was a division in Paul's day. There's a division in our day. Yes. But Paul wanted to understand you can live in a good conscience before God when you worship God, believing the things that are written in his word and putting your faith and your trust in his son, the Lamb of God, the Lord Jesus Christ, the one that takes away the sin of the world. What a blessing. That's the good news of the gospel. We're going to be with you again next week. And until we join with you next week, go to the website, Grace and Truth Church. Got to spell it out. Put the word church in there, graceandtruthchurch.org. Get to the homepage, hit the sermons tab, hit the YouTube tab, listen to the old shows. And until we join you again next week, do like Jesus said, search the scriptures and you'll know what is truth. Amen.